How's it going, Bucks fans? Rachel West here along with Rick Stroud and Joey Knight. First and foremost, we know a lot of people are dealing with a lot of fallout from the hurricane. So thoughts are with all of you guys. There's a lot more important things going on than football right now. But for those who are fortunate enough to have football on the mind, we're here for you. Uh, Rick, I'll start with you. Obviously, with all of this mess of the hurricane going on this week, it did displace the Bucks down to Miami. They were down there all week. Does that have any impact, you think, on their level of preparation going into this game on Sunday? And the fact that this game is actually going to be played in Tampa, how nice is that for them to not have to move again and go play this game elsewhere? Yeah, well, I mean, on the preparation, I think that they're blessed that, uh, you know, the Glazers uh, and, and the Bucks were able to not just take, you know, their team, what they thought was out of harm's way, but also their families, even their pets, if they wanted to come along. So that was a peace of mind, I think, as much as there were still others they were probably worried about back up here in Tampa Bay. Uh, the work schedule didn't change. I mean, they had a place to work out at the Miami Dolphins facility. They had to practice Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as if they would have right here at home, but it's always a bit of adversity and, and can work to sort of help you. You know, in a regular season, you don't typically bond uh, for a home game. That usually happens on the road, but with your families there, totally different situation. In some ways, it may have helped them. We'll have to see. As far as playing the game at home, you know that will help them because that game was going to be played in Minneapolis, Minnesota. There was, would have been no home field advantage for the Bucks, the fans some of whom have probably been displaced, would not have been able to see that game live anyway at the stadium. And we know that Raymond James is a big advantage uh, when the crowd gets going, especially against an opponent like the Chiefs. So that's probably the biggest bonus, uh, even though it's you know tragic what has happened in Southwest Florida. Absolutely. And speaking of advantages, Joey, we have the final injury report now. And it seems as though the Bucks, their offense may be a little reloaded going into this one. And I'm sure that's going to be super beneficial for them. Absolutely. They may be actually a little healthier than before they left for Miami Gardens to, to train over there. Uh, the official final injury report of the week came out Friday. And as we expected, left tackle Donovan Smith and receivers Julio Jones and Chris Godwin are all questionable. The encouraging thing is all three practice on a limited basis all three days in Miami Gardens. So they are in play for Saturday, for Sunday night. I think the iffiest of those three is Julio Jones. Reportedly, he's dealing with a torn PCL uh, in one of his knees. It won't require surgery. Coach Todd Bowles said uh, it really will depend on how Julio responds over the next couple of days, and he'll be a game time decision. All three of them will but he's the iffiest, but just the fact that they all three could be on the field for the first time since the season opener against the Cowboys is encouraging at this point. Russell Gage, he was playing hurt down the stretch against Green Bay last weekend. We could see that on his touchdown catch in the waning seconds. He had to be helped up off the turf. He's dealing with a hamstring issue, I believe it is. He's, qu he's questionable for this game. We don't know if he's going to go. The only real doubtful among the receiving core right now is Brashad Perryman. He has knee and hamstring issues, and Todd Bowles said it would be a miracle if, if he could play uh, Sunday. The only other person who's out for sure is Akeem Hicks, the defensive uh, lineman who's dealing with a plantar fascia issue. Um, so otherwise, they, they come into this game relatively healthy or at least healthier than they've appeared the last uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, well, you got Chris Godwin and Julio Jones back and Mike Evans, of course, coming back. Odds are probably in your favor. Uh, so that would definitely be good for them. Um, and we're going to keep it on the offensive side of the ball. So I'll keep it with you, Joey. Uh, Leonard Fournette, well known to everyone. He's been the workhorse so far this season. How crucial is it, though, for them to start spreading out those touches and get the other running backs involved? I think it's a priority for the coaching staff this week. You know, it's crazy. Uh, you know, only about four months ago, everybody was up in arms about how Lenny came into mandatory mini camp, you know, looking, looking overweight and out of shape. And now in the, just that quick span, he's gone from overweight Lenny to overworked Lenny. Yeah, uh, he, he played, I think, on 59 of the 66 snaps last week against the Packers, something like that, 59 of the 65 possible snaps. And it's been that way for the last couple of weeks. I think the coaches now want to make a concerted effort to get Rashad White and possibly even Keyshawn Vaughn 
involved a little more. Um, the problem is Lenny came out great in that season opener. We all saw it. He, he ran for more than 100 yards, um, but he hasn't really been as productive on the ground. He's averaging fewer than three yards a carry over the last couple of games. But the thing is, Tom Brady still trusts him so much as a pass protector and as a pass catcher. He has nine catches over the last couple of games. That's why he's so valuable. And I think that's why the coaches have been reticent to put other guys in just because of his value as a safety valve for Brady and a protector for Brady. But I think they're going to give Rashad White a try, at least Rashad, a little bit more of a, of a chance. He struggled a little bit in pass protection at times, and he dropped a pass from Brady at New Orleans. But I think they want to try to get him in a little bit more of a rhythm this week. And if he can come in and be effective for a series or two, that makes Lenny that much more effective down the stretch of a game. So I think we'll at least see Rashad White a little bit more, maybe even Keyshawn Vaughn. Definitely interesting to see how they handle that this week. And Rick, finally, obviously, going up against the Chiefs this week, rematch of the Super Bowl not too long ago. What are some of the biggest challenges in going up against Mahomes and this Chiefs team? Well, you said it. I mean, it's Patrick Mahomes, who's still arguably one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the NFL today, and he's doing it with a different cast. He doesn't have Tyree Kill, which is a big loss for the Chiefs. But in some ways, I think that really Mahomes has played better. He's spreading the ball around. You know, they got uh, Marquez Valdez, uh, Scanling, they have Juju Smith-Schuster, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, a lot of hyphens on this football team. Uh, and he uses all of them, and he does it in a way that uh, he's not forcing things as much. You know, it's interesting. They've rebuilt their offensive line and, and they think that that was obviously a big problem in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Uh, but we talked to Shaq Barrett, who said he thinks they have a big advantage, a similar advantage that they did in the Super Bowl. He said this could be our coming out party. Those are bulletin board words that he has to back up on Sunday night for sure. A coming out party for a defense that's already played pretty well this season. So, right. I mean, a lot of hype to live up to there. Uh, definitely going to be a fun one Sunday night football going up against the Chiefs here in Tampa. Uh, thank you guys and make sure you guys are keeping up with all of our coverage that we've got for you leading up to the game on Sunday over on social media at Sports Bay Tampa Bay Times as well as over at TampaBay.com.